Hello everyone, my name is Loka and welcome to a new StarCraft 2 Heart of the Swarm video. Now today is the minus one month anniversary of StarCraft 2 Heart of the Swarm expansion, yay! Okay, I don't have celebrations or whatever, but in one month time from this point, um, the actual expansion will be released. And this is rather quick when you think about it, only about four weeks left till we are actually going to be playing the campaign, at least that's what I'm going to be doing. Um, but people have been asking me how I would change the game right now to either make it balanced or more fun or whatever, but in this video I'm not going to be talking about balance. Like, the, I got a bunch of a bunch of changes that I would make to the game currently, but those are the changes that I would make just to make the game more dynamic or more fun or just to change the game around um, like, for the greater good. I'm not going to be talking about balance. Probably a bunch of damage stuff uh, should be changed if you actually want to be implementing your changes. But here we go. Let's go to the uh, changes that I would make. Oh, by the way, uh, I'm a Zerg player, so I don't know anything about Protoss vs. Protoss and Terran vs. Terran and Protoss vs. Terran. Um, so I'm not going to be talking about those too much. I don't know what, like how the changes would affect those uh, matchups at all. Um, but yeah, those are the changes that I would make currently as a Zerg player. So first of all, the Nidus network. I think the Nidus network is an awesome concept, right? You can actually go from one base to another and just attack in all kinds of dynamic ways, but there are a bunch of problems with this. First of all, in the late game, when you start to really use Nidus networks, gas is so, like, so important for a Zerg player that 200-200 for a gas building and then 100 for the actual Nidus network is just a lot, a lot of um, gas that you need to invest. So, to make this a little bit more viable, I would either change the gas cost of a building Nidus network to 100 gas is this currently, if I'm not mistaken. I would maybe change it to like 25 or 50 or something like that. Or you would be able to console it. So what would happen is that once you actually see the Nidus network being attacked, you can console it. You can currently not do that, but I think that would make the, uh, the Nidus network a lot more dynamic. Besides that, I think they should make loading up a bunch faster, so if you actually put units into the Nidus network, I think that should go a lot faster, so you can use them to, for example, attack into a Protoss player, but then once you see the battle actually tipping in their favor, kind of like they have um, recall right now on the Mothership Core, I think we should have something like a really quick return with the Nidus network. So what you would do, you attack the Protoss, you throw down the Nidus network behind your army, but once you see that you start losing the battle, I think you should be able to pull back into the Nidus network work really quickly and go back to your main base just like that um, without like all your units being picked off with blink stalkers and whatnot. Um, besides that, I would also make um, like smaller units pop out of the Nidus network faster and bigger units pop out of them slower. Right now, um, a Ultralisk goes out as fast as a Zergling. I think that should be changed um, just to make the Nidus network a little bit more interesting. Um, another thing that I would change is the Corruptor. The Corruptor currently is kind of a lame unit. They are supposed to be like the ultimate anti-air unit for the Zerg, but in pretty much every occasion, even with like maxed upgrades, Hydralisks seem to be like outperforming the ult or the um, um, Corruptor quite significantly. So I would just redesign the entire Corruptor, um, make the Corruption ability a lot more interesting because right now it's kind of lame. It's just a damage multiplier. I would not want that as a unit. So um, I would simply just change the entire unit around. Um, maybe just keep the animations and the actual skin for your unit, but just change it to an actual either an anti air unit or a spellcaster, kind of like the Viper is, I guess. Um, but just change the damn five or the jam corruptor. I don't like that. Second or next, of, like the next thing that I'm going to be talking about is. Um, Matchup specific. Right now, Zerg for the Zerg, everyone is opening up Link Bane Link into Mutalist. Those are really the two options, or like the one option that you can go for in Zerg for the Zerg. Now, how can we change that? First of all, I would change the Bane Link. The Bane Link, I think they should have lower um, lower health from them from their self, so they should lower the health of the actual Bane Link. Uh, maybe increase the cost a little bit of the Bane Link, but make the base speed of them a little bit faster as well. So what you would be able to do is actually pick them off easier with Zerg Links, and actually, um, like make them faster in general. So you get a lot, like a lot faster of a matchup, but you also get a less of a bailing versus bailing kind of matchup, um, which is currently kind of lame in the early part of Zerg versus Zerg. Other than that, I would also change the swarm host. I would let the swarm host shoot up. Um, what would happen in that case is that you can actually start using Swarmos in your unit composition. Right now, Zerg vs Zerg is completely dominated by Muta vs Muta battles. And what would change if you would actually change the Swarmos to like shooting up, like the locust, little locust that they spawn from shooting up? I think that would make it so much more enjoyable and actually uh, make the matchup a lot more dynamic because you have more than one option to go for, really. 
Um, besides that, if they would change the Corruptor, for example, make the speed just as fast as the Mutalisk, um, you would actually have to make a decision whether or not you're going to be making uh, Mutalisk or you're going to be making Corruptors. Right now, Mutalisk are just a lot faster than Corruptors and it's not really viable to go for like Corruptor Mutalisk. It's just a little bit weird. Um, so right now, Mutalisk are far more superior than Corruptors in Zerg vs. Zerg uh, Muta vs. Muta battles. But I think if they would change the Corruptor once again, that would make it a lot more interesting. Um, next up, we have Zerg vs. Stern. I would first of all change the Widow Mine. I think the Widow Mine is kind of, um, you know, it's kind of a weird unit. Right now you can burrow it really quickly, you can do a lot of damage with it, but first and foremost, I think it's way too easy to use as a Terran player and way too hard to deal with it as a Zerg player. Um, they actually, I believe, like they don't one shot overseas anymore, but I believe they used to do that. And what would happen is that if you made one mistake um, with the like the direction of your overseer, they would actually just blow up the entire overseer. You would once again have to morph a new one and just use a lot of actions to deal with the widow mine. I think they should change that. I should. I would think they would either put it on a unit, maybe like on the Hellion or something. I don't know. Um, but just change the units around so it's a little bit um, better to use now. While we talk about this, I don't think it's going to be mattering at a high level of play whatsoever because, you know, the pros will have enough APM to actually deal with that. But if you're going to think about maybe gold level Zerks or whatever, they're going to miss a lot of Queen Injects and a lot of macro and all that kind of stuff because they're dealing with middle mines. So I just think it's a bad unit design so far. Um, next up, I put down that bunker salvaging should be a lot more um, a lot more expensive. Right now you can, I believe it costs you like 25 minerals in total if you like salvage a bunker. I think that's kind of stupid. I think it should be a lot more expensive to do that. Um, also, what I think they should change is actually remove the planetary fortress altogether, but add something on top of the bunker instead. So what would happen is that you can actually attack a um, planetary fortress quite easily with Zerklings, but maybe add something on top of the bunker like they did in the campaign. Maybe like like a little flamethrower or whatever, so you can actually upgrade your bunkers um, and that way defend your bases instead of using planetary fortresses. But it, because I still think planetaries are kind of lame when you think about it. Um, another thing that I would change is the Hellbat. Make it mechanical, so you can't pick them up um, with Metafax, or I believe you can. Oh, you can still pick them up with Metafax, I guess, but you can't um, heal them with Metafax anymore because right now you can actually repair them with SCVs at the same time you're healing them with Metafax, which is kind of lame. I would change that around. Um, for Zerg changes, I would change the Ultralisk, I would make it do less damage and add the Burrow Charge ability back into the game because it would make it a lot more interesting. Right now it just do it just does flat up more damage, uh, but if it would actually be able to like go underground and come up like, I don't know, like one screen or maybe half a screen further, I think that would change the matchup for the greater good. Um, currently it's kind of too strong in my opinion. Um, next up, I would also change the Viper. I think the Viper has too much health currently and or too little health because it dies too quickly um, but also i would make the blinding cloud smaller making mech more viable with that but then i would also reduce the cost of the um, i believe it's called the abductability so what you would get is that you can actually throw a small blinding cloud on top of units and then like pull a lot more into your main army right now you kind of like when you're fighting mech you kind of just have to make the decision to use the blinding cloud ability the um abductability just nearly isn't as good um, Zerg vs Protoss don't have too many changes for that. I like the direction that the matchup is heading. However, I would change the Colossus. Right now, the Colossus is kind of this unit that um, stops the Zerg from attacking. Um, when you think about it, well, it's already changed quite a lot in Heart of the Storm. But if they would change the unit to something like um, making it less like less strong versus um, Hydralisk and Zerglings, I think a Zerg would actually be able to punish a third base from a Protoss player a lot better. Um, I would also reduce the spine crawler damage in Zerg vs Protoss um, because the late game Zerg vs Protoss is kind of, you know, I don't really like it. I honestly don't like it. Like in Wings of Liberty, it's just infest the Brute Lord spine crawler. I would nerf the damage of the spine crawler and therefore also nerf the damage of the um, cannon, which would make cannon rushes weaker, which are lame anyway, and that would also make attacking up a ramp a little bit easier as a Zerg. So those are the changes that I would make. To the current game, once again, this will not be balanced whatsoever, but I think it will make the game a lot more fun. I want to thank you guys all for watching. Have an awesome day. Don't forget to hit the thumbs up and the favorite button if you enjoyed the video, as well as to subscribe if you want to see more. And yeah, I hope you have a smile on your face while watching this video. See you again, guys. Bye.